The topic is chronic periodontitis. What is periodontitis? Periodontitis is inflammation of your periodontium, that is your, your uh, alveolar bone, whatever the itis meaning, it is inflammation. And if it occurs over a period of time, a long duration of inflammation or a chronic form of an inflammation will lead to chronic periodontitis. So the inflammation affecting the periodontal structures. Let's move ahead with the slides. Chronic periodontitis is one of the most prevalent form of periodontal diseases affecting almost uh, at least 40 to 50 percent or more than 60 percent of the individuals in the world. And then it increases in prevalence in disease. Severity also increases probably with age. And then it affects both the sexes equally. The males and the females are affected at a, ra a rather equal rate. But this the, the point that you should remember when I said that it is affected by age, you should remember that the periodontitis is not age related, rather it is age associated. The, what, what it means to say is when you have uh, probably as the age advances, the uh, dexterity or the, uh, the, the capacity to maintain oral hygiene might decrease or maybe the initial starting stages when the patient was very young, the just uh, gingivitis, probably the, because of the poor oral hygiene, it would have started with gingivitis, but as the age progressed, his maintenance became worse and the deposits kept on increasing and other contributing factors probably you know, probably he's a smoker or probably other environmental factors like stress. All these multifactorial, you know, etiological factors probably would have caused the periodontitis to have become more in intensity as it, that's why it's become age associated and it is not age related. Just because the patient is 60 years, it doesn't mean that he has to suffer from chronic periodontitis, okay? That's why it is not age related. Apart from that, the age of onset of the disease and the rate of progression of the disease are mainly, I told, they're influenced by lots of factors because it's multifactorial in etiology. So they may be affected by genetic as well as your environmental factors. And if you see the disease distribution, the very important finding here is it is mostly site-specific disease. The chronic form of periodontitis is a site-specific disease. So whatever changes or the clinical signs and symptoms that you are noticing will be mostly related in direct relationship with the sites of the, where the disease is progressed. Okay, And it is directly related to your subgingival accumulation of plaque. So if that particular site involves or it's accumulated lots of plaque, then this can be a reason or this can be a site with, to show the clinical signs of periodontal disease. Now you can classify depending on the disease distribution or disease, uh, yeah, disease distribution, you can classify the chronic form of periodontitis into localized and aggressive form. This localized form of periodontitis that is a chronic form, localized chronic periodontitis, usually when do you call it as localized when it involves less than 30% of the sites that are being examined with are affected with for this form of periodontal disease. So less than 30% of the sites involved in the mouth demonstrate a attachment and bone loss. Now you can call this uh, chronic as chronic generalized periodontitis when greater than 30% of the sites are involved with attachment and bone loss. When you see the disease severity, now depending on the disease severity also, you can classify chronic form of periodontitis as slight or mild periodontitis, moderate form of chronic periodontitis, and severe form of chronic periodontitis. Now, if you see the slight or the mild form of periodontitis, here just 1 to 2 millimeter of clinical attachment loss is seen. Only then, if you have 1 to 2 millimeter of clinical attachment loss, you can call these individuals of, are having your slight or mild form of chronic periodontitis. But when you see the moderate form of periodontitis, you can say that these individuals with at least 3 to 4 millimeter of clinical attachment loss are called as your chronic form of my moderate form of chronic periodontitis. You can see the severe form, you can call the patients with at least greater than or equal to 5 millimeter with clinical attachment loss as severe chronic periodontitis patients. Now this can increase with age, attachment loss and bone loss become prevalent and more severe due to the accumulation of plaque. What are the general characteristics of this disease? Now if you see, what are the signs? Uh, let's see the signs and symptoms of the disease. First, let's go ahead with the symptoms. Usually the patient complains of bleeding gums. He can say, my gums are bleeding, so please do treat. Then he can say the bleeding can be associated with brushing or while eating or while talking or just like that the, the gums are bleeding. So, 
that is first important the complaint that the patient can come to you with is your bleeding gums apart from that he can say that the spaces between my teeth are increasing so maybe that can be a reason to or do it can be due to your uh, pathologic migration because of the chronic periodontal disease or because of the rapid attachment at bone loss uh, sorry not the rapid very slow attachment at bone loss right because you see the rapid attachment and bone loss in your aggressive form of periodontal diseases now, apart from that the patient also can complain of tooth movement means my teeth are moving okay and then he can say my tooth teeth are becoming loose or mobility they can come with the complaint of loose teeth sometimes if there are exposed roots then they can patient says that my teeth are being very sensitive to any kind of a stimulus either thermal or cold stimulus or maybe heat okay then he can say that he can he can complain of a localized dull radiating kind of a pain and he has some kind of an urge to dig he can even say that my gums are slightly itchy in nature or slightly tender and then he can complain of food impaction or okay when there is a food when there's food which is getting impacted into the tissues or impacted into the intendental areas the patient feels the urge to remove these so a digging kind of a feeling and a discomfort so that will cause your kind of a very dull aching pain what are the clinical uh, signs of the disease when you see you have the patient when you observe, when you examine the patient's oral cavity or the periodontal status if you examine the patient will have lots of pockets deep or mild moderate to severe periodontal pockets he can have loss of periodontal attachment that is a clinical attachment loss seen loss of alveolar bone when you ta take a radiograph and see we can have some kind of a bone loss either a hor horizontal pattern of bone loss or a vertical pattern of bone loss which we'll see we'll talk about each one in the further slides or you can it can show signs of suppuration or a kind of pus formation when, which is expressed when you press or use your digital pressure and press the external surface of the pocket you can ex the, the pus can be expressed out from the sulcus apart from that you can see lot of local factors suprajunjival and subjunjival calculus and plaque can be seen associated so these are the and you can also have you can also detect percussion involvement so this you can see the clinical signs which are shown in the pictures now that finishes your clinical signs and symptoms let's see the radiographic signs the first thing that happens whenever the tooth is involved with per chronic form of periodontal disease is a fuzziness in the lamina dura so the crest of the alveolar bone will show slight fuzziness and this fuzziness will continue to show some wedge shaped radiolucent meaning to say first the initial stages there is just in initial bone loss which is showing just as irregular or a fuzziness in the x-ray and then if you uh, if you continue or follow up the case probably you can see you can observe a wedge shaped radiolucency meaning to say the continuation of the loss of bone because of the disease now the third point or the third thing that you can see as a radiolucent projections from the crest of your interdental papilla or the uh, sorry interdental septum which indicate an extension of your destructive process and then the height of the bone will start reducing and then there can be severe bone loss so these are continuations of every step in the disease progression so as the disease progresses your radiographic chain your, your radiographic pattern also change now you can see two different kinds of bone loss here in form of chronic periodontitis either you can see a horizontal pattern of bone loss or you can see a vertical pattern of bone loss now how do you uh, determine the rate of progression of chronic periodontitis there are various models which have been proposed to determine your uh, how your chronic periodontitis progresses okay how does the disease progress now three models have been given the first model is a continuous model now, according to this continuous model this was given by sokransky he said that the disease progression in case of chronic periodontitis is a continuous phase means there is a slow destruction that is happening always the tissues are in a destructive stage at a continuous pace okay but at a slow rate and then came up the goodson's model that is a random model or the episodic burst model now in this model they said that the disease progresses in a 
periods of destruction and quiescence means you have alternative periods of destruction and quiescence or irregular periods of exacerbation and remission of the disease and then the third theory which was given by again by sokransky who said you have a synchronous random or a multiple burst model synchronous multiple burst model now this is you have periods of exacerbation and remission but at a synchronous period at a specific period of time okay that is your synchronous model what is the etiology and pathogenesis of your chronic periodontitis you know periodontal diseases are multifactorial in etiology the first etiological factor can be bacterial so the main role of bacteria we'll see ahead in what are the bacteria which are involved so the main etiological role initially they thought it is just the bacteria then they realize it's just not the bacteria but your host response is also involved in the pathogenesis or the etiopathogenesis of the disease apart from that you have your genetic factors and you have your environmental factors now why do you have to say genetic factors it is not that every individual is suffering from periodontitis you know normally your periodontitis is basically a continuation of your gingival inflammation or your gingivitis your chronic gingivitis will continue as your periodontitis why is it that not all patients having gingivitis have periodontitis right if if we are saying that uh, all now gingivitis progresses to periodontitis all the patients with gingivitis should progress to periodontal diseases but then it doesn't happen that is because of the genetic susceptibility of the individuals to only certain individuals are susceptible to the Uh, to periodontal diseases and then your environmental factors it can be any kind of uh, smoking can be an environmental factor a risk factor for periodontal diseases okay or else stress a patient suffering from diabetes mellitus or any kind of a systemic disease can compromise your or alter your uh, or affect your etiology etio etiology of your chronic periodontal diseases Now let's see the microbiology. The most dominant organisms in your chronic periodontitis include your P. gingivalis, your Tanarella forsythia, and your Treponema denticola. Now, if you remember, now these disease or uh, sorry, these disease-causing microorganisms or the pathogenic microorganisms are into the red complex of bacteria, which was given by your Sokransky. Uh, they are late colonizers and they belong to the red complex bacteria, which are responsible for bleeding on. probing now these are the important key pathogens which are involved in your chronic periodontal diseases apart from that if you see the immunological comparisons there is a flow chart which shows first initially there is plaque so there is microbial colonization of bacteria in the plaque then what happens immediately the microbial organisms colonize the tissues will start producing certain inflammatory mediators or chemical signaling molecules like your cytokines and chemokines now as now these uh, chemical signaling molecules what do they do they attract your neutrophils okay immediately there's bacteria now the neutrophils have to come into play to flush out these bacteria or to eliminate or to decrease the bacterial load so as a result of the uh, for this to happen you need certain chemical mediators that is your cytokines and chemokines now there is an increased expression of your extracellular adhesion molecules by your epithelium your circular epithelium and your junction epithelium now because of the cytokines or the chemical signaling molecules now your neutrophils exit from the blood stream and they have to enter the junction epithelium or they they permeate through the junction epithelium and enter the sulcus to cause about your host immune response now as the infection is progressing now you can see the junction epithelium it will start secreting or your circular epithelial cells and the other cells will start secreting your cytokines and chemokines you can see the chemotaxis of neutrophils meaning your neutrophils are uh, exiting your gingival epi uh, junction epithelium and entering into the sulcus you can see the next picture which shows your connective tissue is getting dominated by your b cells or the plasma cells meaning to say your entire junction epithelium and the circular epithelium is broken or now it's becoming a pocket so entire the epithelium is gone so the infection or the bacteria have penetrated they've broken down the epithelium and they've started to penetrate into the connective tissue and there's a lot of perivascular t lymphocytes and macrophages and slowly as the disease is becoming more chronic in nature you have the b cell dominated lesions okay what are the risk factors of the disease now what are the risk factors of the disease first before we can say about risk factors what are the risk factors you need to know what is a risk factor 
Now, risk factor, when you say, is something which is present within the individual and then they are causing or it is associated with the disease. You say the patient is very much, if he's a smoker, he's, has, he has high chances of developing lung, lung cancer. So, your smoking will become a risk factor for the patient. But it is not the etiological factor. It is not the sole factor for causing lung cancer. It is just a risk factor for causing lung cancer, right? Similarly, you have certain risk factors for chronic periodontal diseases. What are these risk factors? Probably a previous history of periodontal disease. Maybe the patient already had a history of periodontal disease for which he was treated, but still he has got back the disease because he is either not maintaining or maybe some genetic involvement or some environmental factors have re-stimulated the host response to the bacteria and it has led to the recurrence of the disease. The other risk factor is local factors. Too much of contribution of local factors, that is your calculus and plaque can further result. Apart from just the calculus and the plaque, maybe the other contributing factors of uh, uh, or predisposing factors for the development of plaque and calculus like overhanging restorations, uh, the violation of biologic width, over-contoured crowns, then under-contoured crowns, the, the uh, loss of interproximal contact, all these can be the local contributing factors for the development or the risk factors for uh, increased causing causation of your uh, deposition of your plaque and calculus, thereby leading to increased uh, chances for your periodontal diseases. Apart from that, certain systemic factors may be diabetes mellitus. We all know now diabetes, the periodontitis is supposed to be a sixth complication of diabetes mellitus. So if the patient is having uncontrolled diabetes, you have to make sure that the diabetic, uh, diabetic uh, patient would be under a well-controlled diet and his sugar levels are under well-controlled uh, levels so that he can... Uh, avoid the chances of getting or the increasing the severity of getting periodontal diseases. Apart from that, the other risk factors include your environmental and the behavioral factors. Environmental factors would be smoking, stress or any other factors. And then genetic factors. As I told you that not all individuals are susceptible to the development of the disease, right? So some genetic factors are playing a role which are making the patient susceptible to uh, chronic periodontitis. That completes. Now, before that, let's know what is the treatment for this chronic periodontitis. Similarly, just how you treat a regular case of gingivitis. Suppose a patient comes to you and you have diagnosed the patient as chronic periodontitis with all the following, uh, whatever we discussed about the clinical signs and symptoms, and then you advise for an investigation, that is the radiographs, and then you finally diagnose a patient with chronic periodontitis. How do you treat the patient? First step of treatment is to eliminate the local factors. Suppose he has... Uh, lots of plaque and calculus, you do a thorough scaling and root planing if needed because he has, he would have definitely subgingival calculus. So you want to remove all these and some root deposits. So you want to remove all this. And then once that is done, your tissues will shrink and then they become more healthy. So once they become healthy, you check, evaluate for the pocket depth and then decide whether you want to go for a surgical procedure or maybe a periodontal flap surgery or maybe you want to use some adjunctive therapy like local drug delivery systems or maybe you want to just do give him, put him on some systemic administration of antibiotics like a post-modulation therapy or maybe you pr probably want to use lasers or probably you may want to use any photodynamic therapy or the recent advances which have come up or maybe you just have to just simply go for a surgical procedure, various different fly, uh, types of flap designs. Or maybe if the patient is having some vertical pattern of bone loss, you might have to incorporate regenerative therapy or a resective form of osseous surgery. This resective osseous surgery is not done it's uh, nowadays it's more of your regenerative therapy rather than your resective osseous surgery. And then if the furcation is involved, again, you have to modify your treatment plan, thinking maybe you have to incorporate some regenerative methods to regain back the bone in the furcation area, or else maybe you have to think of a root resection, hemisection, or a bicuspidization procedures, and then put the patient on a periodic follow-up. So always keep the patient on a periodic follow-up, and then make sure that the patient is maintaining his or her oral hygiene at the best. Thank you.